Greetings children, welcome to my channel Inside Accountancy by Shakun, Accounting Made Easy. Today we'll be talking about your new chapter that is chapter 8, Dissolution of a Firm. In this video, we'll be talking about the meaning of dissolution of a firm, settlement of accounts, payment of firm's debt and private debt, accounting entries at the time of dissolution. First, let's talk about the meaning of dissolution of the firm. So, dissolution of the firm according to Section 39 of the Indian Partnership Act 1932 is dissolution of the firm means dissolution of partnership among all the partners in the firm. It basically means that the business of the firm is discontinued or it is closed, it is shut down, it is wound up or it is dissolved. As a result, the economic relationship between all the partners, it comes to an end. Now let's talk about the settlement of accounts at the time of dissolution of a firm. Generally, two issues have to be resolved at the time of dissolution. These are settlement of accounts and payment of firm's debt and private debt. First, let's talk about settlement of accounts, which has been given in section 48. Section 48 of the Indian Partnership Act 1932, it deals with the settlement of accounts when the firm is dissolved. It also involves treatment of losses and application of assets. So, while settling the accounts at the time of dissolution, we need to make proper treatment of all the losses and we need to have proper application of all the assets. First, let us talk about the treatment of losses. So, these losses, they may include the deficiencies of capital, which is paid first out of profit, then it is paid out of capital, and if necessary, if any amount of further losses have to be paid, they may be paid by the partners individually in their profit sharing ratio. This is according to section 48A that if there are any losses at the time of dissolution, then profit should be used for payment of such expenses. If profits are less, then we can use capital for their payment. And finally, if even the capital is insufficient, then the partners can individually share them in their profit sharing ratio. Moving on. Now let's talk about the application of assets. Now assets of the firm which may include the amount contributed by the partners to make up any deficiencies of capital, they are applied in the following order. Now, these assets, they are used in paying firm's debt to the third parties. So if the firm has to pay any amount to any third party, then the assets of the firm can be used for paying that amount. Then it may be used also, uh, please remember that if there are any kind of secured loans, the bank loan, which is obtained by mortgage of plant and machinery. Secured loans are those loans for which some mortgage has been given. So if there are any secured loans, then they are repaid before the unsecured loans, such as creditors and bills payable, etc. So all the third parties to whom we have to make payment, the payment may be for secured loans or unsecured loans. So first we'll make the payment for secured loans and then we'll move on to the unsecured loans. Then. The assets, again, I, I repeat that the assets may be used for paying firm's debt to third party. They may also be used in paying each partner relatively what is due to him on account of loans or advances. So, if a partner has given any loan to the firm, then the assets of the firm can be used for paying off those loans and advances. If the balance is not adequate enough to pay off full amount of all partners' loan, then they are to be paid proportionally. Then the assets may also be used in paying to each partner relatively what is due to him on account of his capital. Please note that first the third parties are uh, the payment is made to the third parties. Then the payment is made to the partner for any kind of loan that may he may have given to the firm. And then we come to the capital that he uh, has given to the firm. So capital is paid in the towards the end. Okay. So these assets may be used to pay off his capital and the residue, if any, that is distributed amongst the partners in their profit sharing ratio. So at the time of dissolution, 
at the time of uh, closing of the firm we need to treat our losses we need to pay our losses and we need also need to apply our assets in order to make payments to the third parties so the sequence which you follow here is that first the payment is made to the third parties then the uh, amount is paid to the partners for any kind of loans or advances that they may have made to the firm and finally the amount is paid to the partner on account of his capital if after making all these payments some amount is left in the firm that is distributed amongst the partners in their profit sharing ratio so this is how you apply the assets the sequence must be followed uh, it should not be disrupted moving on now let's talk about the payment of firm's debt and private debt as you know that at the time of dissolution two issues have to be dealt with now those two issues were first was that you need to settle your accounts settling accounts involved treatment of losses and application of assets also you need to take care of the payment of firm's debt and the private debt so let's talk about the firm's debt first now in case of firm's debt the firm's property is applied for payment of firm's debt so debts as you all know any amount which the firm owes to outsiders is known as firm's debt and any debts which a partner owes in his personal capacity are known as private debts okay so firm debts is the amount that is owed by the firm to outsiders and private debt is the amount that is owed by the partner to outsiders so for taking care of or for payment of firm's debt the firm's property is applied for so firm's property is used for making payment of firm's debt but for the pay, for making the payment of private debts the private property of each partner is applied first towards the payment of his private debts and if in case there are any surplus then that can be used for the payment of firm's debts so the personal property of or the private property of the partner is at stake that personal private property will be used for making payment for the private debts of the partner and if there is any surplus and the firm's debt are left so that amount can be used for making payment to the for the firm's debt please note that the private property of the partner does not include the personal property of his wife and children the private property means the property that is owned by the partner who is a partner in the uh, person who is the partner in the partnership firm so moving on now let's talk about the accounting at the time of or on dissolution of a partnership firm at the time of dissolution what is the accounting treatment that we are required to do so at the time of dissolution as we have discussed earlier when a firm is dissolved the assets are realized the liabilities are paid and the balance if any that is distributed between the partners in their profit sharing ratio in case there is any deficiency amount is falling short that shortfall is met by the partners it means that on dissolution the books of the firm would have to be closed why because the firm is coming to an end it is winding up so therefore the books have to be closed so the dissolution process starts by preparing some accounts in the firm's books now which are those accounts now the first account which has to be prepared is realization account realization account is prepared on the dissolution of a firm now why do we prepare this realization account because this account is used to close all the books of accounts and dissolve the firm that is all the assets are written off and transferred to this account all the liabilities are written off and transferred to this account then when the assets are realized and the liabilities are paid again the amount goes to this particular account so basically we are using one account for closing our books and for carrying out the process of dissolution in case there is any gain or loss on the realization of assets or on the payment of liabilities that gain or loss will be shared between the partners in their profit sharing ratio so basically realization account is a new account that is prepared at the time of dissolution for transferring all the assets except obviously the fictitious assets and some kind of loan to partners in cash and bank 
So it basically transferring all other assets, transferring all the liabilities, amount to realizing from the sale of assets and the payment of liabilities. Also, there might be certain expenses at the time of dissolution, which are also transferred to realization account. So basically one account and everything goes in this particular account. And finally, we find out the gain or loss. So that is the first account that should be prepared at the time of dissolution of the partnership firm. The next account which is required is the loan account. Now, there can be two types of loans. One may be the loan by a partner, which a partner has given to the firm or the loan by the firm to a partner, the loan which the firm has given to the partner. In both the cases, if there is any loan to the partner or by the partner, the loan account should be prepared. Loan by, loan by a partner to the firm is not an outside liability. Okay, So if a partner has given loan to the firm, we will not consider it as an outside liability because the partner is the owner of the business. Therefore, this loan, the partner's loan is not transferred to realization account and it is also not transferred to capital account because it is paid after the payment of outside liability. So you need to remember that the partner's loan is not transferred to realization account like the other liabilities because it is not an outside liability, neither it is transferred to capital account. We will be talking about the journal entries in detail in the next video. Now, let's talk about the loan by firm to the partner, the loan which the firm has given to the partner. Now, loan which the firm has given to a partner is an asset for the firm. So, it is transferred to the debit of partner's capital account and it is recovered by debiting the partner's capital account. So, you have to remember when the partner has given a loan to the firm, which is a liability, it is not an outside liability, not transferred to realization, not transferred to capital. It is paid after we pay to the third parties. But when we talk about the loan, which the firm has given to a partner, which is an asset, for that loan, it is transferred to capital account. Moving on. The next account which we need to prepare at the time of dissolution is the partner's capital account. Now balances of partner's capital account as well as current account are shown in this account. So if we are following the fixed method of preparing partner's capital account or the fluctuating method yeah, under both the methods, if in case current account is made under the uh, fixed method, so that current account balance is transferred to the capital account. If partners have taken firm's assets, then they are debited to these accounts. If they have agreed to take over a liability, then that amount of liability is credited to the partner's capital account. We will be learning about this in detail in the next video where we will be talking about the journal entries and uh, I'll try to explain the logic behind every entry. Uh, for now, you can just remember that at the time of dissolution, uh, basically, you need to prepare realization account, the loan account, that is the partner's loan account and the partner's capital account. Finally, the last account which needs to be prepared is the cash or bank account. Please note that I have not written the balance sheet here. Why? Because the firm is coming to an end. Since the firm is coming to an end, so in the end, whatever cash or bank balance is left should be distributed between the partner's capital account. So in the end, our cash or bank account is prepared which should tally. That is, the debit and credit sides should be equal because after the process of dissolution, when the residual money is distributed between the partners, nothing will be left. So therefore, the cash or bank account should tally. So on the debit side of this account, all the entries for opening balances, any amount which you receive from sale of assets, any amount which is brought in by partners is shown. And on the credit side, all the payment which are made in terms of liabilities, expenses or the payment made to partners is shown. So if both in cash, if uh, basically in, if in a question in the balance sheet, both cash and bank balances are given, then it is always appropriate to open one account for convenience. So either you can open cash account or bank account and transfer the other account balance in the respective account which you are opening. So, for example, if uh, uh, you are maintaining bank account, then cash account should be closed and the amount should be transferred to the bank. Alternatively, the bank account can be closed and the amount can be transferred to cash account.
so after the claims of all the partners all the liabilities everything is settled there should not be any balance left in the bank or cash account as i said earlier so the cash and bank account should tally there should be no balance left under cash or bank account so these are the four accounts that we need to prepare at the time of dissolution of the firm the realization account partners loan account partners capital account cash or bank account so in this video we have talked about the meaning of dissolution of a firm we also talked about the settlement of accounts in terms of the treatment of losses and the application of assets how the losses should be treated and how the assets the money realized from the assets can be applied we also talked about the firm's debt and private debts and finally we talked about the accounting at the time of dissolution which are the accounts which we prepare thank you so much for being so patient and listening to me intently if you like my content or if you have any questions you can email me or you are most welcome to put your comments please like share and subscribe to my channel so this is inside accountancy by shakun signing off thank you